thank you very much for being uh, with us today and for the invitation to, to, to join you. Uh, uh, Shabakto links, um, I think, uh, represents exactly the kind of uh, programming, exactly the kinds of goals that the government of Nova Scotia has, which is to ensure uh, that people are able to um, stay in their own homes as long as possible, to live independently and safely, um, to continue to have the kind of uh, interaction that makes, uh, uh, that uh, increases the quality of your life. And I was just explaining that uh, when I first became uh, a member of the legislature, um, a lot of the work that I did was kind of acting as an advocate on behalf of people with government departments, but I very quickly realized and, and understood that that government doesn't actually supply all of the things that people need in order to be able to maintain the quality of their life and that in fact much of my job was to act as a clearinghouse between the citizens that I represented uh, and the various organizations that were out there supplying various kinds of uh, needs that were recognized on the community on a community basis. So, and, and we see great examples of this all over the province, whether they're in the service groups like the Lions Clubs and Kiwanis and the others, or whether they're through the church, the faith communities, or whether um, it is um, through other uh, NGOs that are out there doing uh, this kind of work. Um, and and uh, Shabbat Links is a great example of that. Um, on, on a relatively small budget, uh, supported a little bit by the Department of Health and Wellness, supported by uh, the United Way. Um, they build links between the various programs and resources that exist out there uh, and uh, uh, older members of the community. Um, and that, uh, we, we have been through a, a process now over the last uh, number of years of listening uh, to seniors and to um, uh, those who support in the community older Nova Scotians about the kinds of needs that they have and where governments can best fit in to fill the gaps that exist uh, in uh, those, uh, that kind of mosaic of, uh, of programs. And, and one of the things that we found, um, and this actually quite astonished me, was the access to, uh, to wheelchairs. Uh, and in fact, there there is really no program uh, for um, um, uh, older Nova Scotians, anyone over the age of 65, there, there literally is no program that, that meets the needs of low income seniors, uh, unless you happen to be in a long term care facility. There was no way to, to get access um, to, um, uh, to wheelchairs without considerable cost. So uh, we had a look at that, we worked with a lot of the advocates, uh, and so that's what we're here to talk about today, which is that we are um, going to be investing $1.4 million in a new program that is going to provide um, access to wheelchairs uh, for, uh, 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 for seniors. Uh, and it's, it's going to be done um, in a way that allows people to get access to a resource that will keep them or allow them to be, continue to be uh, in their own homes. And, and, and one of the things we, we found as we carried out this conversation was that um, uh, because of the expense um, and because of the difficulty in accessing any program or assistance in getting wheelchairs, that, that it meant that the ability of seniors to be able to stay in their own home was often brought to a premature uh, end. And, and in fact, they would m either move out, in, out of their own home into long-term care facilities or into other kinds of, uh, of uh, supportive uh, living environments when what they really wanted, what they really wanted it was to stay uh, in their own home. And, and I know this uh, very much from my community. I, I, I live in, in Coal Harbor, but the Forest Hills Coal Harbor community really started um, developing uh, back in the early uh, 70s and many of the people who have been there now they 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 raise their kids there um, and they've moved out and they're there in their own homes and they'd like to stay there because that's where their service groups are that's where their friends are that's where their 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 churches are but they feel like they can't get the support they need uh, in their home to be able to to stay there and we're we're trying to fix that. Uh, this year, we expanded the home support program. We expanded the uh, personal alert program. 
uh, and we have put uh, more money into uh, support for caregivers. And this is the next, uh, uh, another step that we're um, that we're uh, going forward with. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the other things we did was we put money in this, this budget that just went by to ensure that any senior who receives uh, the GIS no longer pays any income tax. We're going to rebate every penny of tax that they pay. And in fact, uh, this year we expect some 29,000 uh, seniors will receive back either all of their income tax or a good part of it. And uh, the reason for that is because we understand, specifically with respect to low-income um, seniors, if they're going to stay in their home, they have to have the resources to be able to do it. Uh, so today, uh, it's about uh, mobility. It's about uh, a wheelchair program that is going to help people stay in their own homes. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, I hope that the message uh, that we're that we're um, uh, sending is that we are uh, listening to. Uh, seniors right across the province. We're trying to recognize where we can be of the most help, and we're and we're committing ourselves to programming that's going to allow that to allow that to happen. Anyway, thank you for um, having me f uh, with you this morning, and uh, I hope you'll you'll see this as a a part of our uh, overall commitment uh, to uh, making life better for seniors. Thank you.